now direct from somewhere in Washington, D.C., the star of Getting Saucy with Rebecca Scott, please welcome Ms. Rebecca Scott! Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I'm Rebecca Scott, and I host this show, Getting Saucy with Rebecca Scott. Today we're making pot pie. Ooh. Let's get started. That's so she's my baby, my baby, my baby, and of course I'll do anything for her. Anything she wants to show her, honey, show her, got a short mouth, a short tongue. Give me, give me, give me some, but don't take the day, give me, give me none. You got to work and deserve. For this recipe, you will need some sort of crusty goodness. You can make your own pie crust, you can buy pie crusts, or in this case, I am using puff pastry because it is buttery and delicious. Uh, about a pound to a pound and a half of cooked chicken. Uh, if you want to grab a rotisserie chicken, that's cool. Whatever works for you. Um, cut up in whatever way you like it. I like chunks. Uh, in this case, I am using about four ounces of mushrooms, quartered, just plain old white button mushrooms. Two medium carrots cut into quarter inch thick rounds one gigantoid stalk of celery. You can chop up uh, a medium-sized onion or you can get these little tiny baby pearl onions that are frozen and uh, I use about a cup. Ta-da! Uh, for the creamy goodness that holds everything within the pie together, uh, we have a cup and a half of milk, uh, some parsley and some thyme. We'll get to amounts for that later. Two cups of chicken broth, three tablespoons of sherry or vermouth or white wine, something vaguely alcoholic is probably a good idea. Uh, it's usually a good idea, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little disappointed in my studio audience right now, I'll be honest, but you know. Thanks, guys. <laughs> four tablespoons of butter. Uh, unsalted or salted, again, just watch your salt uh, before you wreck your salt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, please, no. Uh, half a cup of all-purpose flour and a tablespoon and a half of vegetable oil. Now, having a studio audience is a rare treat for me, so I want to encourage you to ask questions. Are there any questions? Yes. How do you get oil from a vegetable? You squeeze real hard. Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> you just... You pronounced hard. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes? What vegetables do you squeeze real hard to get vegetable oil? Alright, that's all the time we have for questions. <laughs> Let's start sautéing our vegetables in vegetable oil. So you put your tablespoon and a half of uh, vegetable oil made of thus far undisclosed vegetables uh, into a Dutch oven, a large saucepan, something containery like this. Turn the heat up to medium and wait for it to heat up. It's vegetable sautéing time. We're going to start with the mushrooms because they need to go the longest. Um, so yeah, we're going to sauté these mushrooms for about five minutes. The mushrooms have begun to brown, as you can see, so I'm going to put in a little bit more oil. That's probably another tablespoon. And then I'm going to start throwing in the other vegetables. So we have the cup of pearl onions. We have celery and carrots. Celery, as usual, on the floor for good luck. Let's... Uh. What is it? God, I threw an onion on the floor, too. This isn't going very well. <laughs> and a fork. And other things as well. All right, so. Thank you. Thank you for protecting me. So all the veggies are in this pot, letting off steam and uh, getting delicious. I'm going to throw a little bit of salt and pepper on them. 
Yes, as you may remember from previous episodes, we build flavor and build flavor as we go along. There is a little bit of salt. Here is a little bit of pepper. We're going to let these go probably for about another five minutes. You probably want a 13 by 9 Pyrex kind of dish for this. Uh, I'm going to use the trick I have taught you before, which is when you're using cooking spray, to spray it over the dishwasher door. That way the spray just gets on the door and it will just be washed away when next you use your dishwasher. I am throwing the chicken, not throwing it, I'm scattering it in the pan. Uh, and when the vegetables are done, I will add the vegetables as well. And they're getting close, but we're not quite there. want to get all that mushroom liquid cooked off. So the vegetables are going to be cooking a little bit longer. Do you guys have any more questions? Yes? Uh, if you squeeze mushrooms, do you get mushroom oil? Is mushroom liquid the same as vegetable oil? <laughs> <laughs> These vegetables are perhaps slightly browner than you want them, but whatever, brownness is flavor. Dump them into your uh, pan. Um, don't worry about all that brown goodness on the bottom. You will uh, pull it up with the next bit of cooking. First, the roux. Put butter into the pan. Again, you're on medium heat. After the foaming has stopped, we'll throw in the flour. All right, the foam has not completely subsided, but I do not want to brown this butter, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here where the bubbles are smaller than they were. That's some form of subsidy, right? Half a cup of flour goes in and you whisk and you whisk and you whisk. And these nonstick pan whisks are not as good as real whisks, but that's okay. So you whisk and you whisk, and this clumping is exactly what you want. Lovely brown clumps. Uh, I was talking to a studio audience member earlier, and he said I should be careful when making a roux, because if you do it wrong, it will turn into egg drop soup. <laughs> um, I think that explains some of the questions I was getting earlier. My roux is roux-tastic. I'm going to throw in my two cups of chicken broth. My cup and a half of milk, milk, milk. All right, that's a cup. I need to get more large measuring cups. Uh, and here is another half a cup. And we're whisking. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit, not quite to medium high, which as you may remember is between medium and high. Uh, and we just want this to thicken. So we're gonna let it heat and thicken and goodness will occur, I swear. So uh, as I mentioned before, you want this to thicken. So what we're looking for is a simmer. So when the bubbles start coming a bit more frequently, we should start to thicken up. And just to show you kind of how you can tell if it's getting thicker, um, check out how well it coats a spoon. This is a decent coat, but we wanna go a little bit thicker. So that's what we're going to do. All right, it's time to try the spoon test again. And that is a nice thick layer. So I think our sauce is ready, or almost ready. We have two major uh, additions. The first is the sherry, three tablespoons of sherry, or in this case, white wine with a little vinegar thrown in, because I don't have any sherry. So that goes in, and we stir it around. All right, now I'm going to taste the sauce. And it tastes very creamy, but a little bit bland. So we are throwing in a good pinch of salt, a lot of freshly ground pepper, which takes a while, but that's life, and about a tablespoon of fresh thyme. All right. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, I did not throw in the parsley. That's because I didn't feel like chopping it. So, you know, you uh, work within whatever your frame of mind is at the time. Or something. All right, so we dump this whew, 
into the pan. That looks good, right? Mm. Okay. Whew. That is an incredibly hot burner. So just kind of push it around to uh, make sure everything is nicely coated in the creamy goodness. Um, try not to throw it out of the pan because it makes a terrible mess, but you know, these things happen. So I thought I didn't have a tip for you this week, but I totally do. Whenever making a pie of any sort, blueberry, apple, schnozberry, which tastes just like schnozberry, by the way, uh, any kind of pie, including pot pie, uh, it is very wise to cook it on top of the cookie sheet because pies love to bo boil over. It's like their favorite thing. And it is much better to have to clean a cookie sheet than it is to clean your whole gosh darn oven. So that's a tip from me to you. So it's time for the best part, which is the crust. Um, you can get fancy with this. I find you just kind of lay it down on top and, and let it go. Um, so again, I used uh, one package of puff pastry. And uh, I think I'm not quite going to use the whole package. I may just use two thirds of this square to cover it up all the way across. Uh, two important things to do once you have your pie uh, fittingly covered. One, which is the most important one, is to cut some vents because you know how I talked about bubbling over before? That's, it's going to get crazy messy if you don't cut vents in the pie. Um, so you know, just cut some little slits here, there, and everywhere. This isn't a fancy pie. You could, you know, make little leaf cutouts and hearts and, I don't know, spell your lover's name on it or something if you really wanted to. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't, I mean, Charlotte, I, I know your lover loves pot pie, right? <laughs> and this inappropriate comment was brought to you by Rebecca. Mmm, steaming melted butter is a very good thing to brush on any sort of pie crust. Um, so that's what I'm doing. And you know what? A tip I should have given you earlier is cut your vents after you brush the butter on. <coughs> Excuse me, I am allergic to pot pie apparently. Because um, in doing this, I'm totally closing the vents back up. So, uh, you know, we'll recut the vents and we'll put this baby in the oven at 400 degrees for about half an hour. The pot pie is golden brown and it looks delicious. I, yeah, I threw a little fresh thyme on top because, I don't know, it was looking kind of sad and boring without any decoration. Um, so I will close the oven, turn the oven off, and dinner is served. Thank you very much. Ooh. It is extraordinarily hot, so be extra careful. But this has been Getting Saucy with Rebecca Scott. I want to thank my studio audience thank and you. all of you at home. Good night. I know. But you pulled your